Hello, race fans. Cam Cowan here. You're about to listen to an excerpt of our conversation with CEO of J Concepts, Jason Rona. On screen will be classic RRL backyard racing from when it all began. To find our full race video with Rona, please click the links in the description. Otherwise, enjoy. Jason, how did you take J Concepts from a concept to a successful business? Was there any key moment for you? I think a, a couple of the key moments was when my skill set was as a racer and a designer, and I had done both. And I guess you could say at sort of a pro level as a racer, I did a lot of racing throughout the 90s, the early 2000s. As a pro level, one-tenth off-road racer, I studied in computer-aided design, and I got into computer-aided design because I wanted to be part of RC on a design level. When I got into it and decided that we were going to first introduced some products at the 2003 Worlds. The design part of it and the driving part of it came pretty natural to me. We were able to make some products and I was able to race them myself and either critique or make changes that could be proven on the track. You know, I had the experience out there to decide if they were good or not. So kind of combining those two things, I think, was kind of the key at the beginning. Mm. Uh, being able to do those type of things were are kind of two of the major components of being an RC racing company is you got to be able to get it done on the track. You got to be able to design some things and you got to have some style and creativity and you have to have sort of a vision for this stuff. I guess that was kind of my strength at that time. And it kind of blended into having J Concepts and progressing from there has been just a 20 year process going from working in your house to a smaller shop to a larger shop to having employees, my wife, Allison, and uh, incorporated into the process. My mom has always been involved, you know, a lot of my family support. And then we got very good employees along the way. Guys like Paul Wynn, Rich Muller, Fred Reed, and we got Mac Davis, Tyler Hooks now. Mm -hmm. We've had Thomas Tran, Hannah Hardison over the years, along with individuals that aren't really involved in RC that work in the company every day. So we got a pretty decent sized staff now and a large product line. But in the 20 years has gone by, kind of started kind of slow. After about 2013, 2014, it feels like you you kind of blink and you're at 2024 now. So there you have it. Humble beginnings, to say the least. Yeah. Taking this thing from basically nowhere and in the garage to one of the more trying to be a trusted brand name in the business that drivers and racers can kind of go to and to count on. In terms of the vision, did you have any like business mentors or leaders out there that you kind of try to implement into your own work? As a racer, I guess I was introduced to a little bit of the business by being around Cliff Lett at Associated. When I visited California, I, I was able to get out there multiple times. He would show us different things, you know, what a mold for these products looks like, you know, because as a racer, we were always like, why don't they just make another new car? Because back in my day, they didn't make new stuff all the time. You know, now every year and a half or two, there's something new. But back then that never happened happened. And so then they started, he's, you know, would show the difficulty of this process and the cost for different molds and how expensive things could be. And that kind of really got me interested in being a part of the industry, not as just a racer, but somebody that worked in the, in the industry, because I started taking an interest in the actual product from a design and development standpoint, and then what it took to go to market. At that time, I started getting a, a good feel for what was happening there. He got me interested in the industry part of it and what it really looked like from the inside out, as mm -hmm. opposed from just the outside. And then lived in California for two years. I was introduced to Tim Clark and uh, Todd Matson, who was the two main guys at ProLine. Tim was kind of a more of a designer, a mentor to me. Me. I really kind of felt like I was on the same page with him all the time from a, a design, a development about the product in RC. Todd was the owner. He was more of the business side of it and had an educated viewpoint on the industry and the business. And it really wasn't a big interest to mine, that side of it. But what I really learned watching those guys operate was if you didn't know the business part of it, it wasn't didn't really do you any good because I think what a lot of 
designers, engineers, racers do in this is they think that, well, I'm just going to get into this and I'm just going to keep reinventing the wheel over and over and over again. And people will have to buy it. And that's how I'm going to be successful. It's like, well, it's really a lot more to it than that. What I kind of learned by being around this stuff is whatever you're interested in, that doesn't mean that there isn't other interests out there. And I think a lot of racers have a bad habit of thinking whatever it is that they do, that's the only thing that matters. Or whatever thing that they're interested in, are they only interested in the motor? Or are they only interested in the battery? They kind of uh, go tunnel vision on this is the only thing that matters. And there's really truthfully a lot of things that matter. You have to be a little bit aware of things in a broader sense, I think, to really be successful overall. So I would say those are the, the mentors, the, the Cliff Lett, Mike Reedy, Tim Clark, Todd Matson, Gilosi Jr. I spent a lot of time around him. A lot of those guys are designers. Todd was really from Todd Matson, who sold Proline to Horizon, but he was probably one of the more business guys that I was around. The other guys were more designers, engineers, racers. And then watching things that I was interested in as a kid, I was into monster trucks. I followed the more successful brands. I like basketball, the Michael Jordan stuff. You follow what's successful for them and their marketing. You got to have the product, you got to have the people, and you got to have the marketing. That was a big part of it. Inspirations, I guess you could say. Along the line, end up kind of pulling from all these different things that I've been a part of over the years, trying to put one package together that works in this business. I was waiting for like the Jeff Bezos Amazon mentor, but I'll take Air Jordan, because that's uh, <laughs> that's an awesome way to, to think about it. Very cool, Jason. No problem.